everyone attending. So I may um, probably, I may have to again, upload this class uh, in, to your YouTube channel. Let me begin again very briefly. Welcome dear students. Today, I believe it's week 13, if I'm not mistaken, and we are in lesson 23rd, and we are in our third academic period. As I was mentioning before, uh, we have a lot of students who will not be present today. That's why we are recording this class. And um, also, let me tell you, because many of the students who will watch this video later are also probably wondering what happened also last week. So last Monday, uh, we uh, started our third academic period. We started talking about intercultural communication, which is the main focus of this last academic period. And uh, let me also tell you what happened last Wednesday. Actually, we didn't have a class. We started, you know, we, we were here. A few of us were here. However, last Wednesday was um, one day of the dead Eve, let's say that it's like one night before. However, on Wednesday, most uh, classes uh, at UNLA, I was told by the director <laughs> of internationalization, most classes, no one, no one came to the classes. <laughs> it was very hard for students to attend because they closed the streets. Actually, many of the streets are closed in in Morelia because they have the that uh, holidays, the most important holiday in Morelia. So it was a very hectic day. So since we realized that we we had, I think Julia was here, Juan was here. However, only Paulina was here, <laughs> right? And Livia was able to connect a little bit because she was also traveling uh, outside of Morelia to one of these Day of the Dead festivals. So it was very hectic. I got in touch with the director, uh, Diego Prado, our director of internationalization, saying, you know what? Uh, not a lot of students are here. What's going on? And that's exactly when he told me, you know what? Not a lot of students actually came to school today. It's been very hectic. Not everybody can arrive. So I asked him. Him. Should we cancel the class? Just finish the class earlier? And she said, yes, let them go. <laughs> so we were here only for the first half, uh, half hour. I asked you all to watch the videos. If you haven't watched them, I please ask you to, and I encourage you to start watching those videos because we're going to be continuing uh, today and we're going to talk actually about that topic, those topics we were not able to cover last week. So uh, this week we're going to be continuing on uh, intercultural communication. And if you remember last Monday, we actually had very interesting practices, right? It was Halloween. That's why I'm wearing the costume also. I'm letting everyone know because if you watch the video on YouTube, you're going to say like, what is wrong with this crazy teacher and the costume? Well, it was Halloween. Okay. That's why I was wearing a costume last Monday. No more, no more. I know. Right? Everybody's going to think, why, why is this teacher wearing a cat costume? No more, no more cat costume. Uh, however, the cat might come in around, so don't get scared. Uh, because she might show up, okay? And uh, we're going to continue talking actually about such interesting topics. Last class, if you remember, we actually talked about high and low context communication, and we actually watched some videos, and we actually addressed how important it is sometimes for us to understand that sometimes when we think maybe our personalities don't match, Sometimes there's a cultural, an intercultural or multicultural reason to why maybe we think differently. And we're going to continue addressing this situation because it's so, so important. Okay. But today we're going to add into the barriers to intercultural in the reflective essay will be no, yes, we're going to do a reflective essay by the end of this week. So make sure to take notes today. Okay, make sure to take notes today because yes, as I said, we were going to have assignment, homework, class notes last week, but we canceled everything. That's why last week we did not have class notes to be sub, you know, to submit, no assignment to submit. Don't worry, but that's a very good question, Juan. Yes, make sure to take notes today and also on Wednesday because now we're going to be writing an, a reflective essay, but then we're going to add a reflective essay to some of the topics we talked about last Monday. So if you were not here, please go to my YouTube channel and watch last Monday's class because it was very, very interesting. And actually, I always love that you, my dear students, it is with your participation that you make this class better. So today, yes, the topics we covered today and also the cover the topics we're going to cover next Wednesday 
those three days, the topics covered in those three days are going to be what you're going to be uh, addressing in your reflective essay at the end of this week. Okay, so yes, we have a reflective essay by the end of this week. Again, right now we're on week 13. We are November 6, on November, November 6, November 8th. We have next week regular classes, 13, 15. And then remember for my students abroad, the ones in Brazil, Colombia, Russia, we do not have classes on November 20th in Ula. <laughs> okay, however, in Canada, I teach <laughs> regular, normal. So if you have any questions, yes, very good. But we're following Mexico's calendar. So we only have classes on 22nd. And I also have something to share with you. On the 27th, November 27th, we're going to have a guest. We're going to have a guest. So I'm letting you know so that everybody makes sure to please arrive on time. Our guest is Jennifer Sanchez. Jennifer Sanchez, actually, not only well, she's my friend, but she's American. She was born in the U.S. from a Latin American mom, a North American dad. She doesn't speak Spanish, actually, even though she was born here. But she's going to share with you many of her experiences. For example, she has shared uh, with us that she has actually been facing some racial situations because when people see her, they start speaking Spanish to her, but she doesn't speak Spanish. So actually her, her last name is Jennifer Sanchez because Sanchez is her husband, but her last name, her regular last name, maiden last name is a North American last name. I, I cannot remember actually right now, she will let us know, but also she travels around the world a lot for her work. She works for, she's going to explain this to us, but she works for the U.S., for Canada, also for the government. So she travels a lot. She travels a lot to Japan, for example. So she's going to share all these things we have been reading about. Remember all these stories we have read about in her books? Well, she's going to be sharing those experiences with you, like the real thing. <laughs> you know, how formal they are. Uh, remember, we have been talking about the different ways they communicate. So I'm very, very happy and very glad that our dear Jennifer is going to join us in about two weeks in our class. She's going to be our guest. She's going to be talking about those intercultural communication barriers, confusions. So also make sure to have some questions ready. So by the 27th, when she's our guest, we are also able to ask her interesting questions, you know? So anyway, she has a very interesting story to share. I'm going to share her LinkedIn uh, profile uh, during the break, so you can actually read a little bit about what she does. Etc. So let's move on with our class. And as I already mentioned, guys, we uh, watched. I asked you if you were not here, please. I asked you to go right now, and while I take attendance, start watching these videos. They are very short, but they are very important. And so, if you were not here last week, I need you to watch these videos. We have video number one. We have video number two. Let me show you. And we have video number three. Okay. Now, I think the most important, the one that I would like you all to watch, at least right now, if you haven't watched it, is this last one. Because this exactly speaks about something very similar to what we talked about in the last class, in which what I say may not be exactly what I'm trying to say, not with the words, but with a lot of, you know, additional types to communicate, which can be gestures, can be tone, intonation, etc. So I'm going to start sharing right now. Okay, I'm going to go to take attendance. If you haven't watched, please, please at least watch this video right now, because I need you to talk about the videos. Okay, I'm going to need you to talk about the videos. So let me stop sharing. While I take attendance, go and watch these videos, please. And after you watch these videos, I'm going to ask you to please turn on your cameras and collaborate in our participation and reflection. Okay. I'm taking attendance, give me a minute. Okay, here I am. All right, so this is week 13. I'm opening the website. 
Meanwhile, I'm giving you time to finish watching the videos, please. Make sure to open your microphones, please, because remember, I cannot see you when I'm taking attendance, okay? All right. Aranza. Hi, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Continue watching the videos, please. Livia, it's excused. Sahat. We have Sahat. Nope. Okay, Valeria. Here, teacher. Thank you so much. Alec, I don't know if he has a laptop, if he was able to find a laptop, probably not. Okay, Juan, I saw you writing. I know you're here. Paulina, I know you're here. Julie. I'm here. Thank you so much. Continue watching your videos, girls, because I know, I think Juan already watched them. Julia. No, no, Julia. Okay. And Yana. I think I saw you, Yana, but I'm I can't. Here. Thank you so much, Yana. Is everything okay? Yes, everything. Yes, good. okay, because we missed you last week, but again, it was a very hectic week, so I know, I know. Okay, let me just confirm before I go. Continue watching your videos, guys. At least that one, the last one. So, Anansa, you're here. Livia is excused. Ed, uh, Sahad, not here. Present. Oh, you're Present. here. Thank you, thank you, Sahad. I'm so glad I went back. <laughs> yes, yes. Continue watching the video, please. Valeria's here. Alec, excuse. Juan, you're here. Paulina, you're here. Julie, you're here. Julia. I don't know if, if Julia connected. No. Okay. Yana, you're here. Okay. So let me save attendance. Saving attendance. Give me a minute. And also, you may be able to download the presentation from our Moodle page. You already have it there. You can see it. Let me go to our Moodle page just to make sure you have it there. Yes, you should be able to see it. Yes. Week 13, week 13, lesson uh, 23 presentation. You should be able to access it there. Okay. Stop sharing this and this and this. And now I'm going to go to sharing our. Okay, guys, I'm going to start sharing again our presentation. Yes. Okay, share this window, got it. Okay, you should be able to go back to your presentation. So if you have the had time guys to watch these videos, which are very, very important, I need you please to reflect, to go back and share your ideas about different ways to express what we want to say. Remember, this academic period is about communication. And in order for us to address those barriers, we're going to have to read a lot today. And but that's why I shared the presentation because you're going to have to have access to the reading. This video actually presents a very good example of what we assume sometimes in some cultures and what things are said with words. There are there are some cultures in which when things are said with words, that's it. That's exactly what you meant. No more. And I think I have addressed before the example that I have here with Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins comes from a culture in which, and you're going to tell me if this is high culture, high context or low context. Okay, you're going to tell me in a minute. But I would like to understand sometimes that I have to be very understanding because he's very direct. He's not rude, he's just direct. However, coming from a culture in which we are used to making everything, remember last class we were talking about jarritos de claquepaque, and I think Juan, you mentioned sugar, some sugar candy that you were saying that they were also very delicate. What's the name of the candy, Juan? I can't remember. You mentioned uh, a candy that you use that expression in Colombia, meaning that, yes, yeah, suspiros which means like, um, like um, oh, I, I forgot the word in, in English. Suspiro is like a, 
You know, that's the meaning of a suspiro. However, suspiro is the name of this candy that is very delicate. And Juan was expressing that also they have this saying in Colombia saying when people feel very emotional or sentimental, you know, when people are too direct, well, that expresses some type of cultures in which we have to sugarcoat. That's how we say now here in Vancouver, sugarcoat a lot of the things we have to say. And actually, I need to, to share this with you guys. Remember, I also shared before that we may have the perception that the U.S. and Canada are the same. And I have told you before, they are so different. I teach business communication in the Canadian environment to a lot of international students. If I showed you, and I'm actually going to upload some templates, okay, so you can see some examples about some emails, how much they have to say before nice positive things before they actually get to the point <laughs> i actually have students coming from latin america but who have worked with north american business people and when they write their emails just like i used to in the past they're very very direct right <laughs> and even yesterday mr jenkins was writing an email and he asked me could you please come and help me uh <laughs> proofread my email and even though here in the states i know they're very direct and he's of course very direct i added you know what honey i think we need to add some additional i hope you're doing great you're getting ready for the holidays blah blah blah, blah before you get to the point <laughs> and at the end he had written a wonderful sentence saying thank you we're really looking forward blah blah, blah which which was very you know warm but Again, it goes very direct to the point. Whereas in Canada, that those two lines we wrote for email would have been four or five lines <laughs> with positive things. And yes, and we're so happy that you're our customer and we are very grateful that blah, 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 blah. And then we get to the point. And also towards the end, we actually call it the sandwich, <laughs> the sandwich technique. And also towards the end, we have to say everything. So why am I explaining this to you guys? This video, please give me right now, and I'm, I'm going to open the microphones because I need to know what you think about these videos that we have been watching. When you say, oh, I'm, I need a, a, I'm going to New Orleans and I need to get to the airport. If that's all I say, if we're talking to a person who used to, who is used to direct messages, that's it. But if you come from Latin America, <laughs> yes, I know, I know what you're saying. You know what a lot of my students tell me in Canada? Teacher, I sound like a hypocritical person. Like, like this sounds too hypocrisy, too much hypocrisy. And I know what you're saying, Juan, because again, you have been in the States and also you're very direct. And your teacher, I think, was British too. You're very direct. But <laughs> if you're going to be working in Canada, for example, we're going to have to sugarcoat. That's how we say it. Sugarcoat everything you say. And just this example, the New Orleans example, if I don't say, could you please be kind enough to maybe give me a ride? If I don't say that, Mr. Jenkins is not going to offer it, but I must not take it personal. And we in Latin America, we say like, oh my God, I'm going to cry because I said I needed to go to the airport and he didn't offer to take me. Well, I didn't ask. Why would he offer if I didn't ask? But do you agree? That's how we are in Mexico. Okay, guys, so I need you to turn on now your cameras and I'm going to now ask you if you have ever been in this situation in which let's talk about this communication barriers. Also in Mexico, you can refer also people in the north are more direct. People in the south were more sugar coated thing, right? And I think the same happens probably in Brazil and the same happens in Colombia, right? I think people in Bogota, because this is where the business are, are more direct. Whereas maybe in some of the provinces, people may be more, you know, like not getting to the point. So I'm going to open the microphones. I need to see your mic your cameras on, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's begin. Paulina, <laughs> can you share? <laughs> what you thought about these videos or if you have any examples, go for it. Well, one of the videos mentioned that we have to identify if a culture is a high or a low context, because if we identify that, we can have like a better communication and have that cultural understanding. And I think that it's important. 
That is correct, Paulina. And again, it's not about dividing. It's just about understanding why, wh wh why is this person being so rude? Well, maybe he's not rude or she's not rude. That's just the way they have usually communicated. Very good. Juan, do you have any examples to share? Well, uh, the first time I went to the US, I was probably like 16 or 17. And like a bunch of people that I already knew from back then when I was like 13 from translating for this church, um, <clears throat> they were just like people that I, I didn't know at the time. Like families, like the mom of my best friend or something like that, they would just come up to me and try to like hug me and be like, hi, how you guys doing? What's up? Like, it's really nice to finally meet you. We've, we've heard so much about you. And I thought they were not used to say hi and hug people and kiss people on the cheek. So I, so I told my best friend and of course he told, he told his mom and he was just like, I'm sorry if he, if he came out of like rude or something, but I thought you guys used to do that in Latin America. I'm like, okay, well. First, I'm not like every Latin American. And second of all, I mean, it's fine. It's just that it caught me off guard because I know you guys are not used to do that. I'm so glad you mentioned the kiss on the chick. <laughs> be very careful, guys, because there are some cultures actually in which you can be accused of harassment. You have to be very, 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 very careful. Okay. Now, even for me, I know. I know, and I know some of you may sound like, what? Yes, someone can accuse you of harassment, even if you just hug them. Because touching a person, you need in some cultures, their verbal permission to allow them to touch you. It's, it's a very delicate situation. And this is something I really mention a lot with my international students, because again, we, we think, we generalize, remember? And I have to go back to last Monday when we were saying, oh, there are so many similarities. And of course, it's great to focus in the similarities we have. However, as you said, Paulina, if we don't notice, if we're not aware that we may have differences, we may actually be committing something, an, an act that may be perceived as very inappropriate and even illegal, you know, I like this. For, for example, the cheek, the kiss on the cheek and things. Now, when I meet someone in Canada, this is important. When I came back actually to Morelia, in Morelia before what happened in 2020, <laughs> I didn't used to even reach for the hand because when I lived here, I realized people just say, hi, they don't touch. They don't even sometimes shake hands. Juan, has this happened to you? Like people just say, hi. And they don't, you know, they don't even reach for your hand, right? So I, so I understood, oh, okay, personal space. So personal space is important. And I didn't realize that I followed that trend. And in Morelia, when I was introduced to people, I, I wouldn't approach them and give them the hand or, or a hug or a kiss. I would, just, I would just go like, hi. And I was told in Morelia at UNLA, you know what? People think you're very rude. Like, what do you mean rude? Yes, like stuck up. You mean like stock up? Yes, because you won't dare give them your hand. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't, uh, what are you talking about? Just because I wouldn't reach, you know, I wouldn't try to reach them and, and, and give them a handshake when I was meeting people. But then I understood, okay, so I need to adapt. <laughs> but now that I'm back here, <laughs> now that I'm back in, in Vancouver, Vancouver is the same situation. Usually, when you meet someone in business related context, you have to give a hand. That is something that I have learned now in Vancouver. Okay. You must reach, at least try to, you know, reach for the hand of the other person. No hug, no kiss, <laughs> just the hand. Okay. A good handshake is expected in Vancouver. But here again, in, in, in the US, I'm here in Seattle, you know that. Again, it's like this. It's a modern, and sometimes you know what, Juan, what you're saying, follow the lead. If you see everybody shaking hands, you shake hands. If you see everybody just going, hi, and they don't, even with young people, sometimes they don't, they don't hug, they don't know, they just like, no. And some people actually have a lot of anxiety and mental, you know, um, conditions that you cannot touch them. So it's very delicate. I know, I know, it's very interesting. Okay, I would like to know about the videos. I've been giving you time, guys. I hope you have finished. Valeria, what do you think? And then I'm going to go to Julie. 
Um, I also agree with Paulina that it is most about um, knowing how to treat with people and knowing about the culture also because uh, you have to know, as you say, uh, what are the the rules or how do how do people feel if you touch them or if you're so close to them? Correct. And for example, again, here in Vancouver, when I meet someone, for example, from Brazil, because I have Gabriela, he's one of my, he's one of my instructor colleagues, right? And I remember when I met her, I said, can we share the Latin American hug and kiss? And she said, of course. <laughs> and of course, you know, like it's very common. Also, my friend from the Philippines, Elaine, again, very, the cultures are very similar. So again, from the first time I met him, can we share a hug? Of course. And now every time we meet, it's like, oh my God, my dear friend, and we hug and kiss. And everybody's looking at us like, <laughs> I said, don't worry, don't worry. It's just between, it's just between us. Hi, how are you doing? I know, right? Julie, do you have any example? Any, what do you think about this? I uh, pretty much like the video. And uh, as my colleagues said, uh, it's just a case of you read what, the environment there and to be like what are the people give you the chance to be like in brazil it's very difficult you don't hug people if you don't know the people you meet that for the first time you have to hug it's like you be polite <laughs> but uh i know that other countries don't want this kind of touching but uh, i pretty much like this video and i think i always like to be like a high uh, context because I try to make my phrase and my my words my the way that I d demonstrate my my feelings the people know like when I need a ride I don't have money for a bus I not I never say like oh give you could give me a ride I just oh, I don't have money for a bus oh my god I'm going to stay here forever <laughs> because I want to be polite, <laughs> but I know it's different. But do you realize, <laughs> do you realize how difficult it would be? Like, I know, I know you guys, and again, you are not the typical international student, guys, because you are open now. I think this class, again, you have had already many experiences in which you have faced different situations. But can you imagine so many people traveling or meeting people from other places and not knowing this? And they actually think, oh my God, there, everyone is so rude. Nobody offered to give me a ride. Well, you didn't ask for a ride. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, she tells me like, I cannot read your mind. <laughs> and, and you go like, why cannot you read my mind if you love me so much? <laughs> No, I get a Mexican and I know, I know, I know. But then again, we have learned to communicate and, and, and it's a matter of understanding. Very good. Thank you. Now I have Aranza, Sahad, Yana. What did you think about these videos? Um, can I talk? Of course. Uh, I do have an example. I don't know. It has to do with Juan's. Uh, for example, when I went to Cuba, I felt kind of uncomfortable because people were too uh, overwhelming <laughs> and they were they also said like in Mexico they're the same but like you have to know with who to be like that and for example when I was in Italy I thought people were super rude because they 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 aren't as friendly as we are but like we had to understand I had to understand that they have different ways of talking and so I would say I have the low context when I know the people because I like I can say like I don't like this but if I don't know you I'll probably just like go with it <laughs> let yes. me tell you something about Italy the same happened to me I thought people were actually not maybe not rude I was in line in a coffee, you know, getting trying to get a coffee in the morning. People got got in the line ahead of me. And I was like, what? Like I couldn't understand. But then somebody told me, oh no, 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 no. Here you don't make a line. You just push. You just push and get in front so you get your coffee. And they go like, what? I'm gonna push like what? And and I at the beginning I was like, oh my God, how dare you? you know? And then when everybody told me, oh no, no, no. It's not personal. You just push them and get ahead. Are you 
are you serious? Yes, push. Okay, well then, sorry. And then I started pushing, but oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I know, I felt so, also so weird. But again, for us, it may seem rude, correct? But no, it's just the way they do. And also they yell a lot, even more than we do. So do you think they're angry? <laughs> Right, I know. Very good. Okay, very good. Good example, Aranza. Sahad and Yana, any example about these differences in communication? Yeah, when I went to US, uh, I don't like when I go shopping and people are so nice that it feels so fake because they are always smiling and they are like, Hi, how can I help you? <laughs> And in Mexico, like they try to be nice, but not, but not that nice. So it makes me feel uncomfortable because I feel like they are faking. Repeat again, Sahad, where was this? In which country was this? In US. <clears throat> the US, now remember. Actually, I don't know if you were here, Sahad, probably, I don't think, I, I think you prepared the class with Aranza, but you were not here in the presentation. I hope, please, Sahad, go back and watch the presentations, okay? Because somebody actually uh, talked about how Walmart, uh, was it Walmart? Yes, uh, I think Jana and Paulina, you presented Walmart in Germany. And this was one of the reasons why they failed, right? Because Walmart wanted all the German employees to 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 be that friendly, you know, to to show yes, exactly, to show that friendly attitude and exaggerate, as you're saying, like overreact, you know, with the positivism. But that didn't work, of course, in Germany, correct? So because this didn't work in Germany, that's exactly what happened. Very good, very good. Yeah, I thank saw you. A very video that, yeah, go. I saw a video that it explains that in US you have to do that because uh, the customer has like, you have three seconds with the customer to make them feel um, attract to the, with the, how do you say, with the brand. So that's why they have to be like, hey. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. And actually, you know what? This attitude, as you said, uh, a lot of people coming to the U.S. from other cultures, you just said it one. It too, looks like like hypocrisy, like you're, you're, it's too much, you know, it's, it's just too much. And yes, it can make some people feel uncomfortable, but that's usually, usually the way it is. Not everywhere. Let's not generalize. Okay. Yes, very happy to see you, Alec. Don't worry. We're recording the whole class, and um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I know you're having some situations, so I actually excused, uh, you were excused, don't worry, you can just try to catch up as we go on. So let's begin now, you have the presentation, and I would like you please to, we're going to actually talk about four barriers, okay? Take notes, please, because again, we're going to have a reflective essay by the end of this week. The first one has to do with the anxiety of being in a different culture, talking to different people. The second one, we're going to be talking about the assuming the similarities. And actually, many of you have actually talked about these examples, right? Then we're going to talk a little bit about ethnocentrism. However, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. However, we have already mentioned ethnocentrism before. Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me continue sharing. There you go. Okay, sorry. And finally, we're going to talk about cultural generalization and stereotypes. And this is going to be the most important part of our class because when we stereotype can be perceived as a negative situation. However, when we make cultural generalization, that helps us communicate better. OK, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's move on. So the first thing we're going to read a little bit about has to do with the anxiety and the uncertainty reduction theory. So one of the first barriers to communication, guys, is that we feel anxious. We're worried. Why? Because if we really think about it, we're speaking a language that may not be our native language. That's the first thing, right? And not only it makes us nervous to know that we're speaking a language that is not our native language, our accent, maybe the expressions that I'm using. Also, usually if we are in a, you know, in a strange place, in, in a place, in a different country, in a different city, we have already talked about how anxious we can get because we're not in a familiar place, right? So as you can see here, and I'm going to read very briefly, 
this is based on feeling this social distance of I am in a society or I am talking to people from a different society, from a different culture. And this usually has to do with how we're going to feel anxious when we're talking to a foreigner or we are the foreigners, actually. OK, I'm going to read this, for example, they have applied this theory to intercultural communication by further developing the concept of the strangers. Strangers are people who are members of other groups and we automatically remember stranger danger we were taught in the, when we were little kids do not talk to strangers anything who looks differently get away from there they are usually dangerous remember the tattoo with the prison people experience that i share <laughs> remember get away well no it's just because we look different well not anymore right but 40 years ago they were different they looked like strangers so uh, this, when we encounter strangers or when we are the strangers, one experiences uncertainty. And this anxiety actually is going to be a barrier to good communication because we have to be thinking at the same time. And you tell me if this is right or not. You're thinking about the right word. You're thinking about, am I being able to express myself? You're thinking about, I don't know, is it cold, is it warm? Usually it's different. You're thinking about uh, what are people thinking about me? Are they making fun of my accent? What? So there's a lot of anxiety when we communicate with people who belong to other cultures. That's the first thing we need to take in consideration. So when anxiety is high, we tend to avoid interaction. And when it's too low, we tend to, we tend to not care what happens in the interaction. Let me repeat this last part, guys, because it's the most important part on, in a barrier of communication. And I would like you to start thinking more right now as future managers, future supervisors, future intercultural leaders. Think about this. Anxiety arises when a person is apprehensive about this initial interaction. When anxiety is high, we tend to avoid interaction. And when it's too low, we tend to not care about what happens in this interaction. So how is this going to affect intercultural communication? In the future, and I have mentioned this before, guys, you're going to be supervisors, coordinators, directors, CEOs, leaders, intercultural leaders. How can you help maybe other people the strangers we're going to talk about, which may be the foreigners, maybe people coming from other places, people from different countries, or maybe you are the stranger. How could you help them feel at ease? You know, like reduce that anxiety. Well, the first thing perhaps is just from the beginning to express, you know what? I, I am sorry if I'm a little nervous. I, I am sorry if um, I may uh, ask questions uh, just to make sure that I am understanding clearly, but I just want to make sure that we are communicating effectively. But we usually don't do that, <laughs> right? We assume like, let's just, you know, focus on keep communicating and we'll see what happens. Now, we already mentioned that this first barrier, which is anxiety, okay? I'm going to address, I'm going to give you a few minutes, a few seconds to read the second paragraph where it says, for example, and then we're going to talk about it in a minute. Okay. Read, read it first on your own. And then I'm going to read it in a minute where it says, for example, you may have experienced anxiety, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then we'll read it together. Okay, I'm going to focus in the example and I'm going to ask you, okay, I need to know your opinion. Let's, let's analyze this example. So Sugawara, which is the writer, surveyed 168 Japanese employees of Japanese companies working in the United States. That's the first thing we need to establish, okay? Again, 168 Japanese employees of Japanese companies, but they were working here in the U.S. And 
135 of their EUS co-workers here. So again, they interviewed here in the States, 168 Japanese people working here for Japanese companies and 138 North American okay, employees working with them. Now, this is important. Perceptions, remember also worldviews, et cetera. This is important. Only 8% of U.S. co-workers felt impatient with the Japanese co-workers' English. But wait, this is important. I'm going to skip because listen to this almost 60 percent believe that no 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 wait 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 wait. i skip all the way uh, da, 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 da. wow 19 percent of the japanese employees felt their spoken english was very poor uh, poor very poor and 20 percent reported feeling nervous when speaking english with their co-workers 30 percent of the japanese employees felt this is important 30 percent of the japanese employees felt the u.s co-workers were impatient with their accent Let's focus in these differences and percentages. Only those differences, please. Only 8% of US coworkers felt impatient with the Japanese coworkers' English, whereas 30% of the Japanese employees felt the US coworkers were impatient with their accents. So just right there, 8%, 30%, there's a huge difference, huge. 8%, 30%. Why, again, North American felt maybe only 8%, eh, the accent was a situation, but 30% of Japanese. Now, knowing what we know now about high and low culture, you know, context cultures, what do you think may have happened? Because again, in some, remember, let's let's go back to talk about, yes, very good, Alec, I go, I'll go with you in a minute. Try to remember how most Asian cultures are based on relationships, remember? So, Alec, let's hear your, your idea, your hypothesis. What do you think may have happened here? Go ahead, Alec. Okay, I think that the actual problem is that in uh, high context cultures, if you, uh, if you have like a uh, Spanish culture, for example, uh, if you have a problem with language, the native speakers say always says you, oh, okay, that's not a problem. Your language is very good, and uh, if you make some mistakes, he's very patient. In uh, if, if we're talking about his attitude to you, but if we're talking about low context cultures, they look at you like, oh, no, 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 it's not good. It's not our language. You have a problem with communication, but Another problem is that it's not about knowing or knowing language. It's about your desire to communicate. If you want to communicate, of course, you will communicate. So that's why high context culture always uh, communicate because they want to talk with another person. They want to discover new things and low context cultures, uh, they don't want. They don't want to communicate, so they don't want to find new ways to communicate, not using words, for example. Very good idea, very, very good hypothesis. Let's, let's have another one. Let's see if anyone else can have any other idea about why, again, this difference. Why 8% of North Americans felt that they were, you know, impatient about the accent, but 30% of Japanese thought that Americans were impatient with them. So let's see who else has any other idea. Very good, Alex, thank you. And it's great having you back, thank you. Yes, Juan, go ahead. Well, maybe the whole concept of an idea of the behavior that shows patience might be different in both cultures. So Americans are very harsh and they're very impatient in general. So uh, they might show uh, an aggressive behavior to the Japanese culture, but it might not be that way until the eyes of an American. I am so glad you mentioned that one because that's exactly the point I wanted to make. For Asian cultures, you have to, when you, you know, you don't have a problem. Oh, you know what, like Alex said, don't worry, I'm understanding. You know what, you're doing your best and I understand. Don't you worry, because that's how you would do it. But as you said, Juan, here in the States, I can almost picture, you know, like somebody working like, Oh, yeah, whatever. It just goes straight to whatever they wanted to say, right? 
but to the Japanese eyes, maybe that was like, oh, maybe he's angry. Oh my God, maybe, maybe, maybe. Again, you just said it. The just word impatient, showing how impatient we are or how direct we are, is not a matter of who's rude or who's not rude. Is that, again, in logical countries like here, <laughs> they go straight to the point, <laughs> right? And in my case, more like the Japanese, I would like more like, I wish maybe he could tell me, is everything okay? Are you sure? Are we okay? And again, <laughs> there's a mismatch, right? In in the styles, in how we communicate. But again, I don't think you could have a better teacher for this class, my dear students, because I live this every day, right? And yes, that's exactly what may have happened. Japanese people felt, you know, like maybe they wanted more like, oh, it's okay, don't worry, I'm on, you're doing your best. And, but no, a North American, I don't think will actually explain that. Just go like, oh, that's fine. And just go to the point, continue to the point. Like don't, don't waste time, right? Very good. That could be another idea. Very good. Let's read some other examples, guys, and let's continue talking about these barriers, okay? So anxiety is a barrier, okay? Now, uh, let me just go to the example. Can you go please to the example where it says, uh, da, 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 da. now we're going to go to the second barrier, which is assuming similarities instead of differences. And again, I must insist, my dear students, we're not talking about difference to, to separate, but just to understand. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to read this, and then we're going to discuss what happened to this Angolan teenager, what may have happened, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds to read silently. So I'm just going to emphasize the last sentence. When we assume similarities between cultures, we can be caught unaware of important differences that actually may help us be more understanding and not assume that the way I say the things are the ways they are understanding the things. This is a very good example, for example, about the Angolan teenager listening to music. Exactly just like they explain here, most Angolan teenagers, because I have friends also from Africa here in, in Canada, they do things like in groups, okay? So they actually like sharing the music with the groups. And it's very common to play their music and share it with the group of teenagers. And that's very common. Whereas here in the States, most teenagers and also in Canada, they just do it silently. Listening to music is like a lonely, silent activity, and it doesn't have to do necessarily with your group of teenagers, unless you're in a social gathering, in a party, you know, like get together, etc. Now, the same is going to happen with the dinner. And I have to mention these guys. And I, I'm sure this has happened to all of you guys, many of you. Here in the U.S. or in Canada, they bring the check before you ask for it. Now, I have said this before. In my culture, Mexican, oh my gosh, this will be such an offense. So offensive, right? I know. And I know my Mexican students can understand. Like, excuse me, are you kicking me out of your restaurant? What is your problem? So I have explained this to Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> like I have told him. Did you ask for a check? No. So she just brought the check. Yes. And I tell him, this will be so rude in Mexico. So rude. Like you never bring the check unless you ask for it. Yes, Paulina, please share. I was listening while you were saying, and I was like, what? My first reaction was like, what? No, you can't do that. But you know what? This, this, I know these are fun examples. But 
Can you imagine? Now let's think about this situation, assuming similarities instead of differences. Let me tell you something that I actually saw this happening in a business meeting. The first time I went to New York to a business meeting, I remember very similar to the example we talked about last class on Monday in the video. Remember the video about the North American and the, I think she was from Japan organizing the meeting. Something similar happened to me. I remember the person leading the meeting. She, she was, she took the papers and did this, you know, like threw them, not put them nicely on the table to give them to us. For us in Mexico, this is rude. Like, excuse me, why are you throwing me the paper? You know, that, that was like, that's so rude, but not to them. So, but nobody taught me this. I had to, so I thought, you know, because the, I was very young, I wasn't experienced. I thought she was upset. I thought she was angry, like very angry. Like I thought, oh my God, she, this person is like a very rude person. Oh, and then I remember asking somebody else during the break, like, is everything okay with this person? Like, because I think she's probably angry. Did we do anything wrong? And he was like, what do you mean wrong? <laughs> and I said, well, because she's like angry. And he asked me, why do you think she was angry? My, my boss, he was my boss. And then again, with a lot of international experience, he had lived in Germany. He had lived in many. And I said, because she threw the, the, the handouts to us. Sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, because she threw, you know, the, the, all, everything we had, she threw all the papers to the handouts. And he, he said, I don't think she threw them. I think she was just trying to make sure you all got them. And I said, well, in Mexico, that is throwing. And then that's, that's rude. And then I understood, okay, it's, it's, it's not me. There's a difference. So no, now I know they're not rude. He's not rude. But that's how he does things. <laughs> but now I know, right? And again, it, it, it's not about being rude. Anyone else would like to share, guys, before we go to a little break? Are you, are you guys okay? Yes? Any other example about differences? Valeria, Aranza, Julie, Sahaj. And again, we're talking here about assuming similarities instead of differences. And... When we assume similarities, we can be caught unaware on important differences. If I had known that she wasn't rude, I think I will have probably avoided in my mind thinking, oh, she's just being rude. Let's take a break. You two uh, share Aranza, Julie, Sahad, Valeria, maybe one of the examples in assuming similarities. Yes, Valeria, go ahead before we go to the break. Go for it. Uh... Uh, the ones when we went to the UK, uh, we came into a coffee shop or something like that, and we were just looking at, and one of the persons who worked there asked us if we were ready to order, and we were like, no, we're just looking, and he said like, oh, okay, you can go out, please, and we're like, what? We were just looking, <laughs> so we have to leave. <laughs> Let me, let me see if I understand. Explain again, Valeria, but exactly what happened. I'm trying to understand, you know, what's, what's, what's happened. <laughs> uh, we were looking for what they were sailing and uh, the, the waiter uh, was hoping us to be ready to order, but we weren't. So he asked us to leave. If you said, we're just looking, I think what happened is that he thought that you were not here to dine or to order or to have any lunch. Because if you say, we're just looking, that means we're not here to eat. Yes, I think that was a mistake for us, but I don't know. I thought that was a bit rude. <laughs> you know what? And I'm, I'm so glad you're sharing this example. This is a very good example of, of miscommunication in a different cult. Maybe I think what you meant was, we haven't made our choice yet. Could you please come back in two minutes? That's what you wanted to say, right? Mm, I, I think, think yes. <laughs> yes. But when you translate in Spanish, estamos viendo, that means we're looking. That means we're not planning to eat here. That's why he asked you to leave because he thought you were using the table, but you were not planning to eat there. I know, 
I know, but I'm, I'm glad again, we're sharing these experiences. I think probably what you should have probably said is we haven't decided yet. Could you please come back in about one or two minutes? So we make our minds because we, we, we haven't, um, we need one more minute. That's maybe, you know what I'm saying? Is this making sense, Valeria? <laughs> yes. And again, again, you see, it's, it's all this similarity, but I don't, I think, I think, yes, he, they maybe were a little bit rude, but I also know that a lot of people in London, I don't know where you were exactly in England, but a lot of people in London just go in and sit down because there are so many tourists that they just go in, sit down and use the, you know, the facilities, the bathroom facilities and things without ordering anything. And then they are actually allowed to ask you, please to, this is just for customers. So I don't know if maybe that was the misunderstanding, could be. Here in Canada, actually, I was in a Mexican restaurant and tourist about, but not tourist two or three, 20, 20 tourists came into the restaurant asking if they could go into the bathroom but they, you needed a code for the bathroom, you know, so they wouldn't let him, you, they, they wouldn't let the, the tourists, the, the code, they started kicking, kicking the doors and, and, and they got crazy. They had to call the police because they were disruptive and the people in the restaurant was, were trying to explain. And I even stood up and I said, please, you don't have to be rude. It's only for clients. But they were they were not they were tourists they couldn't speak English very well but I I do not know the languages they were speaking either <laughs> so I couldn't understand but they had to call the police because they started kicking the doors because the the, the you know that the lady wouldn't open the bathroom for them but but they were not customers so I I don't know if that may maybe explain a little bit of the confusion Valeria but we're just looking I mean we're not going to eat here <laughs> so maybe that's what. That's where the confusion is started. Okay, guys, we get example, Valeria. Thank you. So let's take 10 minutes. We'll come back in exactly 10 minutes and we'll continue and finish our topic for today. Okay, thank you. See you in 10 minutes. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, guys. So let's go back again to this example. Yes, uh, there are uh, cultural differences. However, I think this is something that we don't do as tourists or when we go to another country. Do you understand how different laws are sometimes in this country that we are visiting? Not a lot of us do the research. And I have to be honest. Most tourists are very irresponsible tourists because we do not do the research to try to find out what is legal or illegal. And this situation, this example that I, sh I just showed you, I just shared with you, of course, it's an extreme situation. It's a very extreme situation, but it's just for you to realize that assuming similarities is actually a very big problem in intercultural communication. Anyone else would like to share? Don't worry, you'll have time to share it. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead because I want to finish today with this. It's very important. Now, ethnocentrism, we already talked about this, remember, in the, I believe in the first academic period. And this has to do with the neg negative judgment towards other cultures. Remember when we showed, for example, this image when we had the Muslim woman in a North America Western, you know, a woman with their dresses and how each one of them perceived the other one as being wrong, as being bad, as being, you know, the ethnocentrism, guys, has to do with the fact of thinking that your culture is the only culture that is all right. And that's why I, I kind of interrupted a little bit, Sahad, about your opinion, because I know, I know for us leaving the baby outside, something completely out of the question. However, thinking about how you would try to be open to these ideas is also understanding, as you said it also, Sahad, 
no one is right, no one is wrong. It's just different, right? And I am so proud of you, my dear students, because I think um, working with our own emotional intelligence, working with our own awareness of how I feel, how uncom uncomfortable or comfortable I feel, I believe we have also made or been aware of maybe we may have some biases in some aspects maybe we may have some prejudices in in some areas but being aware is the first part so you can ask yourself like wait a minute am i assuming that i am right and they are wrong that's the first thing to be taken in consideration now let's give this example all right for example and i'm going to read the paragraph towards the middle of the paragraph Assume that climate change is a fact, and as a result, assume that summers in the United States average 43, you know, uh, degrees um, centigrade or Fahrenheit 109. It will be logical to make adjustments. Rather than air conditioning buildings all day, you may close schools in business in the afternoon to conserve energy. Such adjustments will make sense. Why then do some people attribute sensible midday siestas in hot climates to laziness? There are, and this I have to tell you, there are a lot of cultures that believe that taking a siesta or taking a nap in the midday is related to being lazy. And um, usually Spain is the country well known or most known for people taking siesta. You know, they take a nap usually in the middle of the day. Actually, I don't know, it, Paulina, did you, did you, you lived in Spain, right? But I don't know exactly where you lived. If you could share with us, because I remember all the stores are closed, right? Like for a, for a very long period in the midday, like, like for many hours. How, how is this happening? Uh, could you share with us, uh, dear uh, Paulina? Yes, they have like a time to go to eat and also take a siesta. And... Also, I had classes in the morning and at the afternoon. So I I arrived to the school at 5 p.m. was the first class in the afternoon. Yeah. Wait, help me understand this. The morning classes finish, they finish around 11 then or 12? Um, I don't know. Like oh, three, I think. And then you come back at five? Yes. And then for two hours, everybody goes home and they take a nap. Yes. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you so much for helping us understand. Now, in some cultures, guys, this is seen as laziness. This is seen as, you know, when actually it's part of a culture and it's part of how things are done, right? It's not right. It's not wrong. It's just different. But that's the ethnocentrism part that we have talked about in, again, I'm not going back. This was just a review because we have already talked about ethnocentrism, which is assuming my culture is better than the other culture. So I judge in a negative way. And this is what I wanted to get to guys, because the last part of today's class, the difference between stereotypes and cultural generalization. And this is, I think the most important thing I would like to take notes about and maybe address in your reflective essay by the end of this week, okay? The first thing has to do with the stereotyping. And a stereotyping actually has to do with the fact that it's usually negative. I'm going to read in the second paragraph. The term stereotype is a broader term and is commonly used to refer to a negative, most of the times it's negative, or positive judgment made about individuals based on any observable or believed group membership. So it's assuming, like, remember, and, and I am so sorry I'm using this example, but this was a, a terrible, horrible, unfair example that we all saw happening after September 11, right? You remember what happened here, that people became so scared of how people look, that even up to today, if you look from a certain ethnicity, Usually they know they're going to be stopped in the security, not anymore, maybe that much, but uh, just after September 11, a lot of people were stopped in security at the airports, right? And that is stereotyping people, assuming that everyone, right? And this happened after September 11. Now, this term are, uh, this, the terms are related 
uh, da, 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 making judgments about individuals based about a group of membership. It's generally agreed that racism is prejudice with the exercise of power on or over the group through institutional, historical, or structural means. So it is assuming that everyone who belongs to that, you know, that again, color, culture, ethnicity, they all have this negative trend. They all have this negative, we assume. And again, we already talked about in the first academic period, in the second academic period, that is natural. I'm not asking you not to feel afraid or not because it's 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 instinctive. Remember, we talked about that, how instinctively we feel scared, afraid, anxious when we feel surrounded by people who don't look like us. Here, the, the question for you and maybe for your reflection, where am I stereotyping or using negative prejudices or bias? And is this based on how people look, how people talk, how people, what, what they're wearing? Could be, and, and we'll do it unconsciously, guys. We talk about this, right? Now, this is what is important, guys. I'm going to give you this uh, um, link so could you please watch this little video? Again, these are very short between, and I would like you to please analyze, I'm here, I'm sharing in the chat. What are the difference between stereotypes and cultural generalization? So if you could go please now and watch this little video, I would appreciate it. So when we come back, we're going to finish our class talking about generalizations and stereotypes. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds, make sure to give me digital thumbs up when you're finished with the video, okay? Thank you. So what is important, guys, is that sometimes it's going to be inevitable to stereotype. But here the video, actually, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you took notes of this, please, because they talk about how suspending judgment, you know, like be aware. That's the first thing. Be aware, suspending judgment, but also, you know, be curious, you know, about, well, I'm, I'm wondering. I'm really wondering if maybe you could share with me so I can understand you better. So let's talk about here. I'm going to go to the next slide and I'm going to give you then again a few seconds just to read. So the first thing we have to be is be aware of understanding, first of all, Am I being judgmental? Am I being maybe in a negative way? Am I assuming that everyone from this gender, from this ethnicity, again, 
Now, cultural generalizations can help us. And I'm going to emphasize this part. And that's why I actually marked with bold these this, this words. They are a type of hypothesis or guess for what we expect to encounter when we interact with another culture. Of course, this helps. This flexibility can subsequently sorry, lead to increased cultural curiosity and awareness and thereby improve the intercultural relationships. So, for example, right now, I have, I know we all have questions about each other's cultures, right? But maybe we're scared about how do I ask without being judgmental, without sounding racist or without sounding that I want to stereotype, right? Do you remember that exercise we had on stereotypes when I showed you the picture created by artificial intelligence and each one of those images was usually linked to our nationalities? Remember when we saw that, when we were talking about stereotypes, remember that exercise? And actually I felt kind of like, and I said, please make sure this is an exercise, okay? It has nothing to do with stereotyping in a racial way or anything, but it is a fact that we see each other with this cer certain generalizations, correct? Now I'm going to read the last line. Cultural generalizations can be used as a base, of course, to build upon while we continue to seek out more information about individuals from other countries, okay? Let's continue to the next one. And I'm actually going to show you how to ask the right questions. An example of a cultural generalization could be people from country X tend to have an indirect style of communication. Cultural communications is like understanding if it's low context or high context. So we can say people from this country tend to be more high context or tend to be more low context, okay? Most, and also what I always say is most people, not everyone. For individual, um, cultural generalizations allow for individual differences and help build cultural awareness. Cultural generalizations must not, must not be used applied, uh, must not be applied, sorry, to every person within a cultural group, however, and must not be confused with the cultural stereotypes. So again, Cultural generalizations involve being aware of patterns. There are patterns and similar characteristics of the culture to which one belongs. So maybe in your reflective essay, guys, you can also express the stereotypes that people usually have about my culture, my culture, right? So I, I believe people outside from my country may have these assumptions. Now, maybe, and maybe even some of you have shared, right? I think Valeria or Sahat, somebody shared that even in Canada, I think you were, you were, you, uh, some racial situation happened. So mm -hmm. this has to do, yeah, there you go. There you go. And you shared this. That was stereotyping, right? Like, like thinking that we have negative, usually negative characteristics because of how we look, because of how, yes. Now, also remember, I told you we're going to have a guest on November 27th. And actually Jennifer has shared with us that she has felt very uncomfortable when people immediately start speaking Spanish to her. Where, however, and, and she's she's a very sweet, smart businesswoman, but yes, she may look Hispanic, but she doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> and again, she has been a victim of this situation, you know? And, and once she said, I'm so sorry, and I, I do not speak uh, Spanish. Oh, then they, you know, they switched to English. But she says like, I had to learn just to put this aside, you know, like I cannot be hurt again because this happens to me all the time. But that has to do with assuming things. So assumptions are gonna help us, but, do you see this example, this image that I'm sharing? And there's a reason why I picked the British one. <laughs> I'm going to give you a few seconds to read uh, through it. Okay, so there's a saying saying, oh, you're as humble as the royal family, assuming that absolutely everyone, and again, yes, there are certain patterns. I'm going to read. Stereotypes can be linked to any uh, type of cultural membership, such as a nationality, but could be also religion, could be gender, could be race, and also age, right? Remember, we have talked about, oh, all 
uh, boomers are like this, or old Gen Zs are like this, or old Gen X, or old millennials. We cannot make those assumptions if our our intention is in a negative way to separate people. As many of you said, as long as being aware of these differences is just going to help you communicate more effectively, that's it. But if you're going to be aggressive, if you're going to be offensive, then it becomes a stereotype. Stereotypes may be positive or negative. For example, a positive stereotype will be participants from country Y are good students or host families in country Z are great host participants. I actually have a positive stereotype and I hope I'm not being offensive, but from the beginning, I wanted to tell you, Alec, I know most students from Russia are so smart, so smart. I have this stereotype and maybe I'm wrong, I'm so sorry, maybe I'm wrong, but I have this, this is stereotype that most Russian students are so dedicated and such good students. You'll speak so many languages, but then again, it's a stereotype. I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but you see how this is, this can be usually perceived as a positive stereotype. So correct me if I am right or wrong. And again, I do not intend to be racist or anything, but I have this image, this is stereotype that all the students in Russia, I don't know, Yana, <laughs> you can also help me understand, am I right, am I wrong? But this is a positive stereotype. Again, I'm not trying to be you know, racist or offend anyone, but that's a positive stereotype that I have. So could you also add guys in your essays, in your reflective essays, maybe some positive stereotypes that you may have about some cultures that maybe you had before you actually traveled to another country, before you actually met people from another country, add those things. I'm going to continue reading. Stereotypes, however, tend to be more negative than generalizations. Also, they are typical inflexible and resistant to new information. So you say all people from this X group are like this. No, no, that's negative. That's aggressive. They can and often do lead to prejudice and intentional or unintentional discrimination. A negative stereotype may be people from country A are all superficial. That's why I have told you guys, let's be very careful, right? Even when we say all people in this country, oh, they are so selfish. They are so, well, we cannot make those generalizations, right? Or for example, whereas cultural generalization give us a starting point, you know, from which to continue learning, but usually cultural stereotypes do not allow for individual differences. And again, interfere with efforts to understand others. So I think this is a very inter interesting topic, guys, for you to address in your, uh, perhaps in your reflective essays uh, over the weekend. We're not done yet. We're going to continue still talking next class about some of these topics. But I think if you are able to share some of those ideas, for example, and before we go, I will actually, don't worry about homework, it's not for, it's not for next class, it's for the following, okay, it's all right, don't worry, just for you to start maybe putting your ideas together, you're going to write a one page, a one to two page reflective essay about how we as global leaders, how can all these topics help me be better, be aware of things, etc. Now, I'm going to go back, okay, because this is going to be now our time for reflection. So, could you please share positive with this? We're going to finish today's class. Could you please share some positive generalizations? And I already shared with you guys that I have, and I share, and, and again, Alec and Yana, I hope I'm not being racist or anything because it's positive, but I have this stereotype that all students, like college students, because there are so many PhDs and academic researchers from Russia that I have this this, you know, this positive stereotype that you're so dedicated and such wonderful students, but I don't know, maybe I am wrong. Uh, so please correct me either Alec or, <laughs> or Yana, if you're still here, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So could anyone share a positive stereotype? Yes, Alec, please share with me. And uh, again, I don't intend to be aggressive, but this is a positive stereotype. I have this, this idea. Am I right? And about your idea, I think that it depends from person, but uh, it's really important then that, that uh, people have a uh, good stereotypes about Russian students. I think. I do have. Hi. 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 Can you just say hi to my students? We're about to finish. 
<laughs> much Spanish. Okay, oh. that Alex is. Uh, we were talking about positive stereotypes. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, we don't have time anymore because <laughs> we're finishing. But I was sharing, for example, that I have this positive stereotype that uh, students in Russia are so dedicated because mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of professors and PhDs and academic researchers from Russia. So I have this positive stereotype, Alex, that most students are wonderful students. So we're sharing positive stereotypes. Yes, absolutely. Do you have any culture? Asian, um, China and math. Okay. The Chinese math is very positive. And you have actually a lot of Asian students as a math teacher. I do, I do. Okay, yeah. but what we're talking about here... Obviously, obviously, the English musicians, you know, all the music is best in England, right? Oh, that's a positive stereotype. Are you kidding? Are you I could be like Beatles, the Stones, you know? Okay. Well, a little bit, but, you know, it's a big... Well, no, is that true then? It was a big influence. He's all about Brit pop, you know, and Brit yeah. pop. Yeah, very Brit good. Popular music, yeah. So, Alec, you wanted to share anything? Go ahead. Uh, yes, I would like to say anything about uh, people People from Latin America are very sociable, they are very good in communication, so that's I want to work with them because uh, they, you are very talkative persons, you are very sociable and it is very interesting to communicate with you because uh, to tell the truth, all that you are said, it's something it's real. Your emotions, all that you think, it's real and uh, it's not something like uh, people want to lie you, like American culture, emo emotions in American culture can lie and in Latin America, no. That is a positive stereotype. Thank you, Alec. And I think, again, we cannot say that everyone, right, just like what we're talking about, but yes, in general. Anyone more? Anyone else, guys? One more so we can close today's class. Yes. Really great to see everyone. Keep working hard. Okay. Great to see you all. Okay, guys. Thank you. So, go ahead. Yes. Share your positive, positive <laughs> stereotype. I was just saying but, uh, goodbye to Mr. Yankee. <laughs> But that's all right. Want... I'll tell him he has a meeting, I think that's why he had to leave. But <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I'll let him know. Uh, I think a good one is that American countries are very colorful. Okay, very colorful. Like, okay, okay, yeah, that's a positive stereotype. So, you see, guys, the purpose and the reason why I wanted to finish today's class with these examples not everything has to be negative, and also. Not necessarily dividing to understand differences has to be negative as long as this helps us also. And, and I'm so glad, Alec, that you shared that. And, and, and now I, again, I shouldn't generalize. I know, but I have this image, but at least now I know not everyone. My student in Russia told me that not everyone, and, but I have this image, this, this very positive image. And thank you for sharing the image about people in Latin America. Not all people in Latin America tell the truth, Alec. We also have people who write, am I right, Mexican, my Mexican students? Not everybody is sincere and not every, again, we cannot generalize, right? Very good. Okay, guys, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate this was a wonderful class. We're going to say um, bye-bye for the time being. Yes, I hope you enjoyed today's class. And just tell me before you go, one word or one phrase that you will remember from today's class. One word or one phrase. Come on. Share everyone. Open your microphones and share. <laughs> Very good one. Very good. Suspiros. What else? Acceptance. Thank you, Aranza. What else? Perspective. Thank you. Very good. What else? Stereotypes should become generalizations. Actually, yes. Cultural generalizations or positive stereotypes. Very good. Paulina. But stereotypes is not something bad, necessarily something bad. Can be not necessarily, not necessarily. All right. And again, it's not about finding, you know, uh, differences in a negative way, but 
making sure these differences at least are going to help us communicate better. So we're going to continue next class. Not assuming that's correct, dear Valeria. Very good. And thank you all. I really appreciate all the different examples that you have shared. I'm so glad we recorded this class because this has been an amazing class. And I'm going to try to upload it today if I remember. If not, I'll do it tomorrow. So I'll see you Wednesday and I'll see you Wednesday from Vancouver. <laughs> thank you guys and be patient because I have to run from my Vancouver community class and connect. So be patient. I'll be there. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.